Hey y'all, I'm back. I, I'm uploading my Sunday face and talking about my hair. Um, to, I'm uploading that video right now. Um, this I said I was going to do a second video. Disclaimer, if you hear something, if you hear whining, heavy breathing, it is Tika. Um, our seven month old um, uh, husky puppy. So y'all, if y'all hear something, you may occasionally see me flick or something is me hitting her to get out my face um okay so um so like i said i am i have i'm uploading the what's on my face video um right now um but right now i'm going to talk about i said i was going to try to wait for all three of the episodes to try to talk you know to do a video but mm -mm. um I'm not really sure what's going on with my with this tablet. It's like it's a lag, and when I went back and played it back on the last video, um, it was skipping like it was skipping or something. Um, this is Yala fix my life as a gay pastor. Okay, I'm gonna talk about um, part because it's a three part mega fix. So I'm gonna talk about parts one and two today like i said i was actually gonna just try to wait until all of them aired to try to talk about all of them but y'all i just can't um i can't wait um i have talked about this with friends on facebook um so i'm just gonna get into it okay part one was more or less like an introduction for us to know who the guys were um we have uh, Reverend Mitchell, who is a 42 year old. Well, I'm gonna do it in the order they introduced him to. We have Reverend Derek, who is 30 years old, who's been preaching since he was 19. Um, if I'm not mistaken, they said he lived, he still lived at home with his parents. Um, he said his father was, uh, um, he said his father was a, uh, was a police officer. Um, um, and whatnot. Um, he pretty much he said he was raped when he was a child, um, and it wasn't until later. You know, I think when he was an adult, he said, "Hey, what if I'm gay?" He was in a relationship with someone, um, but um, I think they were thinking, you know, possible marriage. But you know, he broke it off, and you know. Um, but now he's pretty much nobody knows his mother his mother his father doesn't know his uh sister does not know um his congregation of course does not know so for him it's pretty much him coming out to everybody and just now um next you have mitchell um mitchell is a 42 year old man who is married who is also um a, a reverend um, a preacher he his wife had three kids when he met her she had three kids already she was young yeah because she it said she was like 22 with three kids um then they got married and got together and sorry y'all this is my husband um they got married got together and they had two more kids. So he is the biological father of two and stepfather of three. Okay. Now, him on the other hand, like I said, you know, the, the main, both of them are pastors. Both of them are African American. Um, but one is married, one is not. Okay. Now, what I said after watching episode one and I still feel like this I can honestly respect um, Derek way more than Mitchell reason being is because Derek didn't marry somebody knowing he was gay um, he didn't marry somebody knowing he was gay y'all if y'all that's Tico over there in the in the background sniff in the corner nothing's there so just excuse her um take up she bothered my husband gym uh, shoes but uh now the reason that i say that i can honestly respect Derek 
over Mitchell is because he didn't get married to somebody knowing he was gay. Like, you know, I mean, for him, um, he had, well, I'm going, I'm talking about both episodes. So I'm going to talk everything about Derek and then I'm going to talk everything about Mitchell because Mitchell is who, yeah. Okay. So, like I said, in the first episode, he was pretty much just talking. Second episode, they show him, you know, he has come out to his parents. Um, his parents are very religious. Um, you know, his parents and his sister, they, you know, all three were on camera. And they pretty much was like, they were disappointed. They were sad. But in a way, they were relieved that it was finally out. And the father was like, that he'd been known it for about 10 years or so. But... He never asked. He never brought it up. Um, I mean, I mean, a lot of the times, people, you know, family, y'all, you know, you know. Cause I got one of my cousins, love him to death, but honey, we don't know since since we was little. I mean, you could you could see it, you could tell. And it, and no, you don't have to be somebody that's more like. Uh, you know like more flamboyant with it. No, you don't because one of my best friends is gay and I told him we was in Eighth grade I think and I told him, you know, I said um, I said You know, you gonna be gay and he was like no I'm not and I said yes you are because I could just see his mannerisms and by no means is he a He's not a flamboyant type of guy. You know, he's not oh, he's not really feminine or nothing like that. But I could just tell it was just some of his mannerisms that he would do that somebody that, you know, wasn't wasn't gay wouldn't they wouldn't do it. Um and we still like to this day, day we joke about that, you know, because you know, I he was like, "Yeah, you told me when we was kids cuz I could see it." I mean, technically with him I say he go both ways. He say he gay, but honey, he dibble and dabble. So <laughs> he dibble and dabble in female honey pot. So I say he ain't got all the way gay. But anyways, um, I mean, for Derek, I felt for him because I mean, in the black community, we all know it. I mean, y'all, I, you know, I mean, I'm just gonna be real. This may get some dislikes. People say stuff in the media and society, and we, you know, oh, that's trending, you know. Um, but when it comes down to it, it's something that's still just not a hundred percent accepted um, in the black community, like it is. In other communities it's just not I mean that's just the plain truth of it because I guess in the black community like I don't know like it's just not I mean I'm just being honest like I said me I have multiple I have multiple friends that are gay um, I have friends that are transgender um, and I am a very religious person. I am. But my number one thing is I don't judge because I don't have me personally. I don't have a heaven or hell to put nobody in. So I'm just going to sit it right there. So somebody that I, that I feel is, hey, this is a good person. This woman, oh, she's married. She goes to church. She's blah, blah, blah. I can't say, oh, well, I'm going to give you a pass to go to heaven because by whatever standards, you know, then I can say, oh, well, you somebody, you a woman who done had kids out of wedlock, you sleep with you, sleep with other people's husbands. Um, oh, since you're doing all this, I'm going to give you a pass to go to hell. I'm just going to send you to hell because you committing adultery, you a loose woman, you know, so I'm using those two examples. I don't have no heaven, no hell to put either one of them people in. So me, I honestly have lived my life, my entire life, where I try not to judge, period. Because, like I said, I ain't handing out passes. At the end of the day, one thing my mama always taught me is we all have to stand for our own things that we have done. 
we all have everybody. I don't, and y'all know if you watch enough of my videos, y'all know I don't try to push my religion on people. I don't, I, I don't believe in that. That's not my thing. But because religion goes with this mega fix, I'm gonna talk about it. Um, but like I said, I'm still not, you know, gonna try to, oh, this is no. But one thing my mama always told me, like I said, is we all have to stand at the end of the day. We all got to stand and give, give an account. Each person. You got to do something you have to do for yourself. I'm married. I love my husband with everything I have. If you watch enough of my videos, you know that that is true. I love, when I say love my husband, words cannot express the, the emotion that I have for my husband. But at the end of the day, when it's all said and done, I can't stand and give an account for him. He can't stand. I know he loved me with everything he got. We've been best friends since I was 10. He was 9. But I can't stand to give no account for him. He can't stand to give no account for me. So before I even get into the meat and potatoes. Because honey when I say I'm going to go in on Mitchell. I'm going in. But So I'm just putting this out, putting it out there. Before anybody say oh well she. No I ain't nothing. I can't stand and give an account for nobody in life. Period. Hell, my mama had all three of her kids out there in wedlock. So, I'm a product of out of wedlock. <laughs> so, I can't stand and give an account for nobody in life. That's why I honestly and truly try to not judge nobody. I have always prided myself on being a nice person, nice to anybody. I treat people how I want to be treated. But unfortunately, you know in the black community and, and it's not just the black community because i know it's other communities i've watched like documentaries and stuff on like asian men trying to come out and and, and stuff like that it, it is other communities where it's just not accepted i mean you just you know i mean i mean i guess nowadays you know you know you everybody knows somebody that's gay but like when you get down to the meat and potatoes and you get down to real acceptance seriously for the most part it's not something as a culture a cultural thing in the black community it's just not accepted like it is maybe in the caucasian community okay so that's derek you know like his parents said that they were disappointed they said, you know, they felt like, hey, did, did we do something wrong? His daddy was like, maybe I should have spent more time with him. You know. So now his next thing is going to be standing and, and giving, you know, um, a sermon. And pretty much coming out to his congregation. Because in a way, I'm being honest, I'm somebody, I feel like, it's all about honesty and in a way you know it's something that is not accepted especially in the black church so he does need to come out to his congregation to give to give those that will say hey i don't care what kind of how you preach how good you know your sermons are i'm not gonna sit under you because of this lifestyle just to give an example i back home there's a, a, a bishop he's not gay you know but he i would i have said this ever since i was a teenager the only way i would ever hear one of his sermons honestly is if i just so happened to be somewhere just so happened to be in a church or something or an event and he was a speaker that's the only way i would not actively go to his church period because this man has and like I said I try not to judge but for me if you gonna stand up and try to tell me and, and, and lead me I want you to at least be attempting to live your life in some means of what it says if you married be faithful And this man is like my mama age. You know, he's in his 50s. And when I was a teenager, he was messing with one of my classmates. 
and he had kids that was, you know, and she was a teenager. I mean, of course they did it, you know, on the wraps, you know, but he was messing with an underage girl. He had had multiple women, you know, that were part of his congregation that he messed with, all kinds of stuff. I mean, and it's known. It's stuff that he has done since my mama was young. Like, yeah. So he's somebody that I wouldn't. Because I, cause I, I can see your actions, his actions. He don't really, he don't really believe, he, he don't really live those, those sermons that he standing and preaching. He's not living them in his own life. So I can't. So Mitchell, I mean, we're going to see next week what happens. Um, you know, and from, from the looks of some of the faces, honestly, you could tell some people already had a, you know, a look like, whoop, this probably going to be my last, um, sermon. And at the end of the day, I'm not going to say them people wrong. I'm not going to say they're right. It's their choice. That's why I say it's all about choice. I feel like you have to be informed. You know. Um, but one thing I do really respect about Mitchell. You know, and this I'm going to say about Derek. And this is going to segue into Mitchell. Derek said that his whole, his whole ministry is taught. He tries to teach people to love who they are. Stand in who they are. Now, let's jump on over here to Mr. Mitchell. Like I said, he's 42, married. They got five kids together, you know, between each other. Now, he has said that he has actively sat up for over 10 years and preached directly against being homosexual, being gay. How can you do that? How can you preach about something when you know you are it? Okay. Now, his whole hit what in 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 part one, he was crying. He was saying that he didn't want to involve anybody in his mess. He didn't want to involve nobody. Well, sir, you got married, which y'all, Iyanla. I really got to give kudos to her because she had pull it up out you. Cause she got his wife Tiffany together, honey, quick, fast, and in a hurry. Um, which I'm I'm gonna I'm get on her too. But he said I didn't want to involve nobody in this. Well, how can you not? Because you married this woman, you knew she already had three kids, and then y'all had two kids together. So how can you not get involved with nobody? He pretty much came out. His story is a lot is different from Derek's because he came out to his wife. He told her, hey, I'm gay. Deal with it. But what he, but the reason he's on the show is because he never told her about the, the people, the men that he cheated on her with. Okay. He pretty much, like he, they said, I figured it out in episode one, but it really came out of episode two. Him and his wife, they had only known each other for six months before they got married. Six months. And to me, just like Iyanla told him, he pretty much got married to cover the fact that he was gay. That's pretty much it. But just like Iyala told his wife, she got to take responsibility of that also. Yes, he deceived and he lied to her. But at the end of the day, she she bears responsibility too because you married somebody you didn't know. You married somebody, you married a man after knowing him six months. And I loved how when Iyanla was talking to him, talking to um, her, talking to the wife about, you know, they were talking about the covenant and, you know, you marry, you know, before God, the Bible says you are married for life, you know, and, and, and whatnot. And, and so she was like, well, are you with somebody, you know, because y'all still married, but are you with somebody? And the wife was like, yeah. And she was like, yes, I have somebody. And she was like, well, wait a minute now. You sin it because you married. You have an adultery, whether you look at it or not, you married. And so she kind of was like, hmm. And I said, well, y'all excuse me my language. I said, God damn, Yola. Go in, Yola. Y'all, this, this, just like me and my friend was saying last night on Facebook, we was talking about it. This right here is deep. And it is on so many levels. Because first of all, let's just, I'm just going to really talk about them. First of all, I feel like Mitchell, he was, he is in denial. Like, 
it's almost like he feels like he really had did shit wrong. Okay. Because in part one, he was talking about, oh, well, my wife um, had an affair. She didn't sleep with nobody, but she had an affair. And Yona was like, wait a minute, by this point, you had already had sex with five different men. And he was like, well, I mean, I'm not saying I didn't, but she did too. No, 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 no. He's trying, he's in denial. And he's trying, he's really reaching because he's trying to find any little bit of thing that she did to, to take that blame away from him. To make it seem like he really didn't do, like his, his dirt is not, and his tea is not as bad because yeah, I done went out here and I done slept with five people, but she had a conversation with somebody. So that just, you know, negate everything I done did. Also, Miss Tiffany, just like Yonla said, Yonla was like, you had no idea. Now, I'm not saying she she should have known he was gay. No. Because you wouldn't just naturally think, oh, unless your husband or uh, boyfriend just really flamboyant, you wouldn't just naturally think, oh, they're gay. But Yonla was like, you had no idea that he was having affairs. And she was like, no. Y'all, I think both him and her is in some real denial. Because I'm just going to, I'm not going to get nasty or nothing, but I'm just going to be honest. As far as my house and as far as my bed. And like I just said a little while ago, I love my husband. Me and my husband love each other. I mean, like, down to our souls. I know my husband. And I'm hopefully if you're watching this video, you've grown. So I'm going to be honest. Since my husband is in the military, you know, he does, like, they do PT every day. So, there are times when, you know, it's that time of the month for me or he's just plum tired. Like, they've had to do a ruck march or something, you know, however many, five, ten miles. Sometimes, some people have to do 20. Thank God he ain't never had to do that many. Whew. But, that you know, it's really physical. And it's, you know, they do PT, which is physical training, physical training, physical fitness. They are always working out every, they work out monday through friday damn you know, unless something happens or they have to do something else so there are times when my husband is tired behind me is our treadmill i fuss at him because he will do pt in the morning and he'll come home and he'll run on full speed five miles and then complain to me later on that his legs sore and I'm like babes you're doing too much I say all that to say that there are times where he's tired. Hell, I'm tired. I work now. I mean, I'm standing on my feet all day at my job. But if we don't went too long and it ain't that time of the month, or hell, I don't even get, give a damn if he is tired. If we don't went too long, like a week or two weeks, and we had no kind of loving Uh, I'm saying something, or he's saying something. One of us gonna be like, "Uh, <coughs> what's going on?" Plus, even even when it is, my husband is tired. My husband honestly cannot go a day. He cannot go 24 hours without being affectionate to me. And when I say affection, I'm not talking about sex. I'm talking about coming up behind me, hugging me, or kissing on me, or touching on my booty, or something. It's him. He he can't. He has to be affectionate. Me, I'm affectionate, but I'm more affectionate with my wife. Like, I still have to touch him in some kind of way. But I'm always um, telling him stuff, calling him baby, calling him love, just different little things. So we are very, we are verbally and physically very affectionate to each other so we'll even when when it's time we can't have actual sexual contact like you know we are still very physical every single day we we have an, a, a deep physical and emotional connection that we express to each other every single day so tiffany just like the younger said you can't tell me that your husband is not being affectionate thank because he said I'd rather be with a man than to be with her. So that right there tells you that 
They didn't ever say it, but that just tells you that it wasn't a whole lot of affection going on when he honestly was not super attracted to her. You can't tell me you didn't have some kind of inkling that, hey, something is wrong. That's why, like I told my friend, Mitch was in denial, but I feel like her denial was even stronger. Then as she was talking to Iyanla, I feel like honestly, in her mind, she thought that it was something that he was just going to wake up one day and say, you know what? I changed my mind. I don't want to be gay no more. I don't want to be with no man no more. I want to go ahead and come back home and be with my wife. And I honestly feel like she would have said, okay, come back. Because just like Iyanla said, why y'all ain't got no divorce? Because you come telling me that you gay and you want to be with a man ain't nothing else we can ain't, we, we really ain't got nothing else to talk about because I can't compete with no man now if you come to me and you say like I feel like if a, a man comes to his wife and say you know like oh he, something like something dealing with another woman maybe they can work through that you know maybe the woman can I don't know. Maybe she don't let herself go a little bit. And she can tighten. The I don't know. She can tighten stuff up. I don't know. But when it's a man. When a man. Just like if a woman tells her husband. I no longer want to be with a woman. I want to be with. I, I mean I no longer want to be with a man. I want to be with a woman. He can't compete with that. A woman. If her husband come and say. I don't like. What's between a woman's legs anymore. I'm not going to be too graphic. I want what's between a man's legs, what's between my own leg. What else is there to damn talk about? I feel like, like I said, she was in denial. She honestly thought that it was something that he was just going to snap out of. Then he told her, he, he told the young look, he feels like she has turned their children against him and she said that their oldest which is her biological child their oldest has lost all respect for him well first of all mr mitchell you can't preach something you cannot sow into your children you cannot put in their heads that something is wrong and if you do this you going to hell you cannot put that in their lives their entire life and then all of a sudden because you decide that you want to do it it's all of a sudden okay it don't work like that it, it doesn't so when Iyala asked the wife she was like well, have, do you tell your kids that their father's going to hell she said no I don't have that conversation with you with them. Honestly, the wife don't have to. He done told them. He done told them. He done brought them up in his own ministry. He said that he has preached. He preached for over 10 years that if you are gay, you go on to hell and whatnot. So if you preach that hate and that negativity, you and damn stalling that in your kids yourself. You can't sit up and get in your feelings at your wife. That's just the plain truth of it. Also, let me, let me, I want to, I'm trying to choose my words wisely. Because like I said, I don't have conversations with female friends on this. When they was in there and Yiyama took out, brought that damn uh, marker board in there and it had them five people on it and he told her, I slept with five men while we were still married, living in the same house, we were still together. I slept with five men. And she was like, mm. Then he told her man number one, man number two. And she remembered those times when he was not there. But Lord, when they got the when she said that you remember me in three, four, or five. To myself, I'm like, well, why is she saying it like three, four, and five like that? Y'all, when that man said, there was just random men I met on Christmas. Let me tell y'all something. I pride myself on trying to be in control. 
never showing out or nothing like that. I, I pride myself on that. You know, conducting myself and trying to carry myself as a lady. But on everything I damn love, if I was sitting in that chair when that man said that, I would have jumped on his ass. They would have had to get security because you really just done told me you don't give a shit about me, honestly. For you to just hook up and, and meet and have sex with random ass people. I don't give a damn if it's a woman or a man. For you to just do it with random ass people, that really tells me, fuck me. Seriously, and I'm sorry, y'all. This Them got me pissed off because... And she is just boohoo crying. And that's how it ends. But I was just like, honey, because at first she wouldn't say nothing. She was silent. And see, I think, could be wrong, but I think she was finna swing on his ass. And to me, she would have been a hundred, a million, infinity percent justified. Cause it's one thing for you to sit in my face and tell me you cheat like period. And I'm I'm sorry, it can be you cheated with me, a man, you cheated a woman, period. It's one thing for you to sit up and tell me you cheated on me. But it's a whole nother thing for you to sit up and tell me you cheated on me with random ass people that you really don't know nothing about. You don't know what you could have brought home to me. I got kids. I'm putting myself in her, her space, y'all. Because y'all know we ain't been blessed with no child yet. So, put myself in her, space, her spot. But I got kids. I got five damn kids that I got to worry about. And you done told, sat up here and told me that you done went out here and you done slept with five random people. Well, he, well hell, I don't know was random because he said one of them he met at the store, the other one he met at the hardware. None of these people was some like oh well I work with such and such and I knew him and no like at the end of the day like <sighs> so y'all we gonna see what happened but ain't no damn way and honestly y'all I'm gonna wrap this up I feel like just like I told my friend last night I feel like she was holding out hope that they would get back together but after them words came out, a combination of words, when he said, I cheated on you with five different men. And then when he said, three of them was men, random men I met on Craigslist. Y'all, I think all hope she had was out the damn window. I hope for her own damn sake, all hope she had was out the window. Now, I'm never the one to try to tell nobody, you know, or, or advocate for somebody over. Oh, well, he shouldn't be around his kids. No, nothing like that. I mean, he's still like Yana told her. He's still the biological father of two of your children and the stepfather, father figure to the other three. One of them, her oldest, she said his biological father has nothing whatsoever to do with him. So, in all accords, that's his father. So they're going to have to work through that. But one thing I would not do, honestly, if I was in her shoes, I don't think I would tell my kids is at the end of the day, that's y'all father. Y'all love y'all father. But I wouldn't try to force nothing because he is the one. Like I said, she didn't put that hate and all this stuff against gay people in them. He did that. His own actions did that. And their oldest child... He done lost respect for him because he's supposed to be the man of the house and he done chose to abandon his family. So I know somebody might say, well, you now she should try. No. One thing my mom, one thing I was always taught, you never down a man in front of his children. You don't, you let somebody actions, a man's actions speak volumes to his own child. So it's not a mother's place to down the man or oh he ain't shit or nothing a woman ain't got to do none of that none of that because at the end of the day his actions gonna speak for themselves y'all that is it like i said this this right here really got me in my feelings because it was just downright disrespectful period 
excuse my language but it was it was disrespectful on so many levels y'all and like i said even though i'm somebody i don't fight i really don't argue i get you together hmm but I really don't sit up and argue, go back and forth. Y'all, they would have had, like, seriously, I know me and I know the person that I am. I would have fought him. Period. Point and blank. I would have fought his ass. So I guess she a better woman than me because we would have been fighting up in there. But y'all, as always, I do thank y'all for watching. Um... Um, I don't know. I probably do a response to part three. Um, but as always, I make videos strictly because I like doing them. Like I said, I already made this. This is what's on my face. I probably would be doing my nails either tonight or tomorrow night. So I'll make another video for that. Bye.